house on the gym vacancy, and he was covering that for us. And I'm like, no wonder they love him so much in the township. He's been working there forever. Tom, we screwed up, but he really screwed up. So Tom was double dipping stories to us and to Amber.com, and he never told me. The same story? He didn't even change him around? Oh, he quote unquote changed. Oh, I changed it. It's not. It's not the same story. I said. I said. Tom, that's the same story. And so did he get fired or did he quit? God, it's a combination of both. I said I because I desperately, desperately needed him. Was your mouth coming back in or was getting out of touch? Did you like compare the two side by side? And they were the same story. I mean, it was several. I'll so have to watch the door. I actually okay. But they were the All right, same. so we're going to start. I'll introduce you. Okay. Okay. So, welcome everybody to um, Adobe Creative Suite. It's being taught by Nicole Seguin. She's the editor of the Chelsea Standard Extra Leader. And as you probably know, you're at the Southeast Michigan Community Media Lab. This is an outreach project of 21st Century Media which um, owns Heritage Media, which is located here in Washtenaw County, as well as the Oakland Press, the Morning Sun, Macomb Daily, and other publications across Michigan and the United States, for that matter. And um, we offer free help here for bloggers and anyone interested in social media or digital media. So you're welcome to come to any of our workshops or come for individual help. Okay, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you. As Michelle said, my name is Nicole Siegland, and I'm the editor of the Chelsea Standard and the Dexter Leader. Um, I've been using Adobe software since I was in high school. I started out using it when um, I was the associate editor of my high school newspaper. Um, we designed pages and we used Photoshop to get everything done that way. Um, and then in college, I, was, um, I worked for my college newspaper as features editor and then editor in chief. And we always just used InDesign and Photoshop. And I learned how to use Illustrator um, during my senior year. Um, and it's a really cool tool that I'm going to show you guys how to use. I've also designed for um, the Oakland Press, as well as Heritage, um, and then I did the Grand Traverse Insider in Traverse City. Um, so I'm really, really, really excited to show you guys some of the things that I know. Um, and I'd like to start off with a quote um, from Paul Rand, who is famous for designing corporate logos. The quote is, uh, design can be art, design can be cool aesthetics. Design is so simple, that's why it's so complicated. I think that design, it's really great, but a lot of people take it too far or they don't do enough. And so it's important to just realize that it's not, it's not, like it is simple, but it's not, and it's important to kind of maintain a good balance between it. Um, and then, oops, there's an extra W in there when I was editing it. Um, but what is the Adobe Creative Suite? Um, it's a lot of different products. You've got After Effects, Acrobat Pro, Bridge, Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop, Dreamweaver, and on and on. All the tools you can use interchangeably, and you can use them together to kind of create a good final product. Um, today we're just going to go over Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop, just kind of the basics, so I can give you guys a good idea. Um, and I'm going to start with Photoshop. Um, and the first question is, why, why would you want to use Photoshop? Photoshop, if done right, you can correct color, you can remove red eye, you can clean up blemishes, you can resize and crop photos, you can convert them to black and white, lighten photos, sharpen images, you can do so much with it. Um, and I've, I have a couple of examples of, these are some things that you can do with Photoshop that look really well. Um, the first photo is kind of my favorite. There was a father, I got it from Pinterest, there was this father who his daughter had made this image of the rainbow. And the, the father was like, I really want to incorporate this into a photo. So he took a picture of his daughter, and then he photoshopped the rainbow on top. So it kind of incorporated both together. And the middle one is this 10-year-old um, kid who takes all these pictures of himself, they're really small, and makes different things with them. He's 10. Yeah, he's oh, really crazy. And then um, I've got some bad things that you can do with Photoshop. <laughs> I see this all the time, people trying to make themselves. It's mostly men trying to make themselves look more buff and women trying to make themselves really skinny. Um, but here are just some examples of things. People are trying to use like the double tool and all these other different things to make themselves look different, but they clearly look really bad. Um, so before I go into kind of explaining Photoshop, one of the things I really want to um, describe or, or explain for photographers is to shoot in RAW um, and how important it is to shoot in RAW. Do you guys know what I'm talking about when I say shoot in camera raw? Anyone at all? Um, 
Camera Raw is a setting on your on an SLR camera, a DSLR camera. Um, it allows you to it keeps it retains more of the information. For example, when you shoot in JPEG, um, some of the data gets destroyed. So when you shoot in RAW, you have it all. And um, I have an example of my cousin. I took her wedding photos. And it was a really sunny day. And of course, the location where I wanted to take the pictures, the sun was shining. And so the, uh, there was a lot of these really harsh shadows. So um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk you through how I edited it. But here's basically the before. And then here's the after. Um, and you can go in and edit the things, the different aspects. Here, I'll show you. Have any of you guys ever shot in camera raw before? No. Okay. What does the setting on your camera look like? How do you know? You change it in the camera settings. I can help you if you need me to, to Crystal. Um, but it's really cool because I'll show you. Like you can, there's so much more that you can do with it. Oops. Okay, and so one of the things too is when you shoot in camera raw, your files, they're not, they're no longer saved as a JPEG. They're saved as a CR2 file, which is bigger, so they kind of do take up a little bit more space on your um, memory card than you would normally get with a JPEG. So it's also important to make, like, pay attention to when you're taking photos because you can't take as many. So when you open it, it'll automatically open up in Photoshop, um, or at least it does in mine. <laughs> um, and then once it loads, okay. So you get these settings over here that you don't get if you're normally editing with the regular JPEG. Um, and it's cool because you can change like just the basic stuff, like change what type of light you're shooting in. Um, I always just do the one that I think looks best. That's how I kind of judge it. Um, you say then, when you open RAW, a picture in RAW, this comes up? Yep, this comes up. And so what's cool is now you can change the shadows. So you can bring them up or lighten them, make them darker. You can make your highlights come up, so it's kind of like making things lighter. You can play with the contrast. You can make something really clear. Um, you can make the colors really vibrant. There's so, there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of play with this a little bit. I don't want, and then you can go in and color correct it in Photoshop too if you wanted to. Um, but like say you want to like change the background, you can go in and click this and change the curves. You can just change things here. Um, if you want, I don't know if you guys like vignettes, like these things, you can give it this in here. You can do it, start with zero, give it a little bit more, or you can make it white too, if you want. Um, here's also a way where you can kind of like play with um, the grayscaling. You can make certain colors more colorful, and I don't know if you can see what it's doing, but the reds over in her arm, it's changing that. Um, and you can just completely click all and convert them all to grayscale, and then you can play with like the certain things here. And you wouldn't get this option if you were um, shooting just JPEG, because by shooting with the camera raw, it's retaining more of this information, which allows you to go in and edit this all better. Um, I prefer it. Um, and then right when you're done, you can open the image, and it opens it right in Photoshop, um, eventually. <laughs> um, and then you can go in and correct it further if you wanted to. You can correct the contrast or the levels. Say the photo is really dark, and you wanted to make it lighter still. You can change the levels here. Um, and then one of the things, like in this photo specifically, that I like to do is kind of clear up some of the parts. For example, my cousin's standing next to this pole, and there's all these like things on it. I want to get rid of it because that's not, probably people wouldn't realize it, but it, it bothers me, and it's something you don't want to see. Um, so you can use the patch tool and make it go away. The patch tool is right over here. Um, there's the different options, but if you hold down and click on it, you can get the patch tool to show up, and you just draw a circle around it, move it to a space where there's nothing else there, and it's gone. Um, I've used this tool in, I took a class in college, um, and we had to, one of the projects where we learned how to use the tool, we had to take an ad that had words all over it. And you had to get rid of the words, but make it so that everything in the picture looked normal, like so that you had a picture there. And it was really challenging because, say you're taking a picture of someone, and there's a word over their hand, or like over their arm, you have to use the patch tool to kind of create 
that arm, recreate that arm from just using what's in the photo um, as your basis. But it also helps, like the patch tool lets you delete things. Like if you're taking a picture of someone and they have like a blemish on their face, you can just go right in. My cousin has, um, she has a mole. And she wanted me to remove it, for example. <laughs> go right in and it's gone. Um, does anyone have any questions before I keep going? Is there one that looks like a band-aid? Yeah, that is one that is. Do the same thing? Kind of, yeah. I like the patch tool more. I just, I don't know why, I just like it more. But yeah, there's also the healing brush tool where you can just, um, you option click a spot where you want it to like target from and then you use a tool and it kind of takes it from that area. It's pretty much the same thing except for you don't draw no, the circle. Sure. Yeah. So you could get rid of like that tattoo on it? Mm-hmm. If, yep. Would it look normal if you use the patch tool? If you spend a lot of time with it, yeah. I wish I still had some of those images that I did for my class because they were really cool. Like I did this one and it was like a girl in a jail cell and it had like a word all the way across it. So I had to recreate like the jail cell stuff and you had to make sure that it looked seamless, like there was nothing there. And it is possible by using a combination of the healing brush tool um, and the patch tool. And then um, I've also used, like for example, on my cousin's photo, I think it was this photo too. If you can see right here, like this piece of hair is missing from her bun because it separated a little bit. And I wanted to add that back. And the easiest way I found was by um, using the polygonal lasso tool and then kind of cutting a spot from it, from her hair, and then um, popping it and pasting it. And then it's usually right in the same spot. And then you can just drag it, and then you use the patch tool to blend it all together. Um, and you can merge the layers together so you can do that better. Um, but you can just like give it a shine if you want, just make it all look natural because you don't want to look like that guy with the big muscles or anything like that. Um, does anyone have any other questions or anything? Okay. Um, I'll go back into the PowerPoint. So yeah, you can see like what I did. I just spent a lot of time with the raw, um, camera raw settings to try, try and make it look better, try and lighten different things. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is, it's, this is really basic, a lot of people like the effect, but um, taking a black and white photo and having a color element to it, um, it's really, really, really easy to do. Um, I've seen ways of people doing it by like taking a color down and just like taking all the colors down and just making just some color show, but I'm just going to show you a way um, that's really simple to use. And to do. Okay, this is another photo from. Actually, yeah. Okay, this is from my Gutson's birthday party. Um, so this one I just have as a JPEG. I don't have the raw version. I already edited it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is make it so that the background is black and white, but the balloons are in color. So what you do um, is you duplicate the background. So you right click and then duplicate the layer and then click OK. And then the next thing that you want to do is go to layer, layer mask, and review, reveal all. And then um, you're going to also want to go to adjustment or, yeah, hang on. I'm going to go back a step. Before you do the layer mask, I'm going to start over. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Okay, so make a duplicate layer. And then um, before you make the layers visible, you want to um, make the copy of it. You want to grayscale it. And you can do that by going to an image, adjustments, and then hue and saturation. And it's the middle one. You want to take it all the way down. So it looks like this. And then you want to go to layer, layer, um, layer mask and reveal all. And then you can zoom in. And then you take the paintbrush tool. And you want to make sure that you have your color selected. Black on the top is your foreground and white as your background. 
I'll show you what difference it makes. Um, and then you take the brush and you just color over it. Say you go a little bit too far and you get like that. Then you can switch the colors and use the white on the top and go straight back. And so it's really easy to do. Um, you can also make the brush bigger. So it's really simple here um, to just make everything in color. And you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to do the whole balloon. Have any of you guys ever done this before? Okay. It's really cool. A lot of photographers do it for, um, I've seen it like for wedding photos, like a black and white photo, but the bouquet just being in color. Or um, I did a photo of my goddaughter. She has really pretty blue eyes. And so I did black and white with just her eyes in color. And it was really cool. Um, that's what I was actually going to show you guys with, but I feel like this photo does um, better because there's a lot more color in it than just eyes. <laughs> Um, so I obviously went over a little bit over here, so I'm just going to zoom in. I'm zooming in for accuracies. Obviously, you can make things more precise. Um, I'm going to change the brush to, no, I'm going to leave it. Oops. Switch over my colors so that the white is on top. And so I'm getting rid of what I went over. And then your final result. Oops, I'm sorry. Looks like that. Um, and like I said, people like this effect a lot, I've noticed. Um, and it's really easy to do. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is um, take your two layers, click on them. I shift click. And then I right click and merge the layers. And so that it's all one picture. And then that's it. Does anyone have any questions about that? Is merge layer the same as flatten, or is there a difference? Yeah, I think so. That's I use I use prefer merge, um, but you can also merge it so that, um, like it said, merge visible. So say you had this checked, um, the eyeball is making it visible, and you didn't have it checked, then it would leave that one alone. Um, all right. And now I'm going to show you. Um, how to create a cutout image. Um, we use cutouts a lot in newspaper print. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen, like, for example, just a couple weeks ago, we had. Um, <laughs> it's hard. With cutouts, they're not difficult to do. The, like, the main thing is to really pay attention and make sure that you're being precise with it because you can do it wrong and it can look really bad, or you can pay a lot of, spend a lot of time with it and make it look really well. Um, this photo right here is from this is a newspaper and they did a cutout. Um, I really like cutout effects. Um, I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to use the same photo of the balloons for it just because it's going to be an easy one to cut out. Yeah, the hardest things to do for cutouts is like people's hands and their hair, especially if they have really curly hair because you have to go in and like fix all the curls and it can look really weird. Um, Round things are kind of hard too. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make a duplicate background again. Um, and then I always just turn the eye on this one, or you can delete it too. Um, in this case, I'm just going to delete it, delete the original. Oops. So we've just got the background copy. And then you're going to want to zoom in. I recommend zooming in as much as you want. Like it's better to be super zoomed in than to be super zoomed out because that way you can pay more close attention to detail. You're going to want to use a cropping tool. There are different ways to go about doing this. Um, I've seen people use the magnetic lasso tool, which kind of just like predicts the line. I don't like that tool. Um, it, see, you just, it does no clicking. I don't like it because it sometimes isn't very accurate. You can use it if you want to, um, but I prefer the polygonal lasso tool which you make your own little points with. Um, you can delete the points by hitting the delete button. Um, so if you go too far, 
you can just delete. So, and then I like to do mine, I, I recommend if you ever do a cutout to do it in parts. Um, I've experienced so many times where I'll spend 20 minutes cutting out this thing and get all the way to the end and then something will happen and it'll like select everything and cut off the guy's arm or something. And if you do it in parts, like say you want to get rid of like this section at a time, it'll save you a lot of trouble in the end so you don't have to go back and redo it all. Um, I'm not going to cut out the whole thing, but I'm just going to kind of show you an example of what to do. So you click a starting point and you just basically follow the edges. Um, just like this. And you can see, I'm sure you can assume, where it can get really difficult with hair or with hands, because hair especially is really crazy. Um, so I like to sometimes go into the photo too, that way if it has like a weird border, like these photos, this picture does with the light, you're not getting that. Um, so I'm just gonna do a little bit, and I'm not even getting close enough. You can get super close, and make sure that you're being super can you add a point? What do you mean? Can you add a point? Remove a point after you establish it, or you have to go back and go, like delete it. Okay. Um, um, okay, so I'm just gonna do that much, and then I personally like to do it so that it's like off to the side, just so that you can um, just click off. And then to get rid of it, you have to find the part where you started. So it's right over here. You know it by this little dot that shows up next to the tool. Do you see it? Oh. Um, so then it's clicked and you just hit delete. And this checkered background means that there's no background to it. So for example, if you were taking this and putting it on like a black page, a page or a black image, it wouldn't have a white box around it. It would just be the image and you could just drag it on. Um, one of the things that you can also do while you have it um, selected is you can change the feathering and the feathering will make it so that this, the edges are smoother um, so if you're doing a person for example you don't want like really rough edges or this because look at how it looks with you can see um, you can see how the edges are kind of rough right here by feathering it sorry by feathering it um, I do usually like four, and then you delete it, it makes the edges a little bit smoother. Um, and you can change that number as much as you want, as high or as low as you want it, and it'll change obviously respectively. Um, but then cutouts are good, you can put them in text, um, and one of the cool things about them being a cutout, sometimes with text images you can wrap the words around it, so just like in the PowerPoint, um, which is that? Maximize again. Right here, the text is wrapped around the cutout of the, the guy, if you can see that. Um, and that's because they put a text wrap, I'll show you guys that too in InDesign. They put a text wrap around it, and it hit the edges of it. Um, mm. Does anyone have any questions about cutouts or anything? All right, um, now I'm gonna talk about Adobe InDesign. Have any of you guys ever used Adobe InDesign? Okay, what it's good for is uh, not just for designing pages, but you can use it to make business cards. I've made my resume with it. I used to have a resume in Microsoft Word, um, but then I switched it to InDesign, and I'll show you. I have my old resume versus my new one, and it looks very different. Um, so I have this little info slide. This is also someone else's resume. Um, but InDesign is what we use to paginate or design the pages of the newspaper. You can use it to make business cards, resumes, menus, any type of page thing that you'd like to use. You can incorporate all of your Photoshop elements and your um, Illustrator elements all into InDesign and make um, things. So right now, this is my old resume. This is what it looked like. It's really boring and I don't like it. <laughs> and so when I was graduating, I wanted to make it look a little bit more fresh and more fun. So I made this. Um, in InDesign, I used colors. I came up with different, um, different headers for it, but it's all completely InDesign. Um, and I'm going to show you guys kind of how to do a page. Um, it's not difficult. You kind of just need to know what you're doing. I'll show you 
how to format text, place a photo, give items a stroke around them, and a little bit more. Um, I'm going to close out of Photoshop too. Um, one of the things that I would recommend is if you do have, does anyone own the, any of the Adobe products? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to go into this at the end too, but um, if you don't own the Adobe products, because they're kind of expensive, one of the cool things that um, Adobe does now, it's called the Adobe Cloud, and um, you can get the whole thing for $49 a month. Um, you can cancel it at any time, but you get literally like every single Adobe product that they have. Um, or if you wanted to play around with it for a little bit, they do have the 30-day trial, and you can use all of them too. You can also get um, month or single apps per month. Um, and what's different about like owning the cloud versus owning the software, because I don't have the cloud, I wish I did. Um, but they have software, like for example, for Photoshop, they have a special feature for the cloud, just that version only, where say you take a picture and there's a little bit of a blur from like motion, from moving it, it can tell where that blur is supposed to go and it'll <laughs> fix it. And so oh, there's awesome. no yeah, and it's only offered in the Adobe Cloud version. It's called Photoshop CC Creative Cloud. Um, are, you, are you saying Cloud, C-L-O-U-D? Yep, mm -hmm. Cloud. I think that's what they're all going to switch to eventually. Like, I know Microsoft has a cloud now for all of their Office programs. Um, so it, it, you're not talking about cloud where things are stored? Right. It's, you're talking about a generic name for a program? Right, yeah. I think that they're going to start doing it this way so that you don't like you don't get a physical copy of the program anymore. Oh. You get it from the internet. Okay. I think they're going to do it more because you can, there's less piracy. You can't really mm -hmm. download it. Mm -hmm. um, with the free with the free copy or the watermarks, or can they use it? No, you can use it as much as you want for 30 okay. days, and then it'll make you buy it. Uh, but you can kind of I never said this. You can this. You can go around it by like making more Adobe IDs if you want it to be sneaky. Um, and you can do that and have it for another 30 days and another 30 days. But they register it, like you register an email for an Adobe account. Um, okay, so this is um, InDesign. I guess not. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm just going to make like a document, nothing too fancy. Um, I'm going to show you. When I was in college, I got one of the first things I did as editor of the newspaper. Um, we made templates for all of our newspaper pages, which made our design process a lot easier. I'll show you what I mean because I have one of them with me, one of the templates. Um, we made like 60 different templates, and we had them all printed out to a big book so people could go in and say, oh, I really like that design. I want to use number five, and just drag it onto the page. Um, but I'm going to show you briefly um, how to place text and everything. What would you guys use in design for? Do you guys have any ideas? Business cards. Business cards? Nice, so <laughs> if you guys wanted, go ahead. That's a good idea. Yeah, I've done that before. Um, you also want to use um, Illustrator for screen printing too. Um, I've made like a design. What's cool about Illustrator when I get to it is um, you're not making just like an image, you're making a vector image. So you can make them, oh, you're fine. You can make them as big or as little as you want and the, the photo quality or the quality of the image will still be like really, really, really good. Okay. So when you open up, I have all of the whole suite open on my computer and it's making it go really, really slow. Okay. So this is a blank page. Um, Nicole, yep. I know that you're a drugstore, but <laughs> Can I speak up? Okay. I like that group. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, I'm <laughs> okay, so we made a whole bunch of templates like I was telling you. Um, you just kind of drag them and drop them like that. It's really simple. But I'm going to show you how to um, do all this on your own. So, page. You want to make a text box, you click the T, and um, I mean it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> um, you can change the font over here. 
Um, there's two different ways to play with the font. You've got the A, which is character formatting tools. Um, you can change the size of the font. Um, you can make the font, like change the different fonts. Um, one of the really cool things, I prefer using um, InDesign for anything that has to do with fonts because of the different things that you can do with it right up here. Um, say you don't like how close that word is together. You want to make it really thick or really wide apart. You can change this, literally change the spaces between each letter right here. So you can give them big spaces or you can do little spaces and have them all really close. Um, you can make it all caps, make it all normal, which is, I find really helpful when we're designing pages. Um, you can give it like exponent things, all this, all this different stuff. If you have multiple lines of text, for example, um, you can change, see, here's a good example of how it's all like on top of each other. You can go in and change the spacings between each of the letters. You can have them as big or as little as you want. It's all a matter of what you think. I do it based off of what I think looks really good. Um, okay, and then, um, so I'm just gonna do like a really quick page design, um, starting with placing a photo. Um, so you can either use this one or this one of the boxes. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but they both work fine. <laughs> I like to use this one though. So you make a box, um, and then mine automatically strokes. Um, I like to have a one point stroke with my photos, and then you'd think that the way to place the photo would be to open it, but you actually have to file and place. Um, so you can go down to file or and place, or you can use the keyboard shortcut command D, which I use a lot, um, and you place, it'll open it up just like this, um, and then you take the photo. I have just some random photos from the Chelsea Fair, or the Chelsea Parade. Um, and it places it in there. And so if you click on, there's the two different arrows first off. Um, you've got the selection tool and the direct selection tool. So the selection tool cl clicks anything that you um, made. So for example, our box. Whereas this one, it's the image inside the box. So you can see that the image is a lot bigger than the box is. So the way to do that, to make it fit better, you can either hold down shift and drag the arrow to the corner, or you can right click and do um, fitting, and then fit content proportionally, and then it'll make it fit better than, you, than I would just recommend um, either making the box smaller or right holding down shift and dragging down the corner to make it fit. Um, you can also, while using this tool, you can move the photo around in the box. So if you like it a certain way, you can make it look like that. Um, can you guys hear me okay? <laughs> All right. Um, and then I also wanted to show you, I have a library. Um, is this like the best thing in the whole world when it comes to designing something if you do it a lot? Um, so for example, I've got column headline. You just literally drag it and drop it and it's right there. Um, and I have a lot. This one's from when I was in school. This is my column or the headline here. I want to use a regular headline. Um, so you can just do this. And if you wanted to do to add things to a library, you just um, drag them in and they're there. You can change the name. So we've got man in the car. And so then say I want to use that photo again somewhere else somewhere. There he is. Um, okay, and now I'm going to show you how to do body copy, which is like the text in the, um, in, on the page. Um, so you can make a box and then fill it with the text. I like to use placeholder text when I'm just playing around with it. Um, to do placeholder text, you right click and then um, fill with placeholder text, and it'll just fill it. Obviously, the font here is a little bit weird. Um, 
it's in italics and it's centered. Um, you can change that by going here and doing that. And then also, I don't know if you can tell, but there are no indentation marks. You don't ever want that. So how the heck are you going to make an indentation mark? Well, you can use this area right up here, um, which is another one of the reasons why I like using InDesign for fonts. So you can indent things as much as you want here. And you can even do it paragraph specific. So say I don't want this paragraph indented, but I want the rest of them indented. Um, and then you can also add, like, for example, a drop cap, which is this. You can make them as big as you want. Maybe you want it to be the whole word. Um, you just click the button. You can also um, What's that called? a drop cap. Um, you can also be using this tool. Say, for example, you want to put the text in a box and you really want the text to be equal, like the space around it to be equal on each side. So you can make a box. Um, and then I'm going to use object array to send it to the back and then make it this color. And OK, so now I want to make this text equal on each side. Make sure that there's enough of the same space. So what you can do is highlight it all and go up here and on each side make it the same amount. 1.25, that's what I'm going to do, 1.25. And that way there's equal space around each side of it. Um, that's easier, in my opinion, to do than sitting there and like going like this and going like this to make sure that you've got it equal. Just by doing it that way, it's really, it's really simple. Um, so, okay. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I know in design it's overwhelming. Um, you can also make columns. I've seen someone before, someone that I know. Um, he wanted to do four columns of text. So instead of making a column, he would use like this little button right here and just make all these different boxes, and they would all look really funny because they weren't the same size. Um, a way to fix that is by um, clicking it, and then if you click, oh my gosh, where did it go? Oh, right over here in the three, you can make the columns as big or as small as you want. So you could do, for example, two, make the thing bigger, make it bigger, or a little, just by changing it. And that way they're also equally proportionate. Um, however, one thing to pay attention to is if you, for example, have the font indented the way I did to show you guys, and then you try and make multiple columns. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, this area right in the middle gets really big. Um, for example, watch. It just keeps getting bigger. It looks awkward. Um, you see, it's like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You don't want that. Um, so a way to fix that is just by doing it the hard way and making the boxes and then putting like a pica of the space um, in between each side. Um, a cool shortcut I learned, if you guys are interested, um, if you want to equally figure out how far things are from each other, if you hold down shift or space and move with the arrow, sorry, shift and move with the arrow, it'll move it exactly one pica. Um, so it's moving it one pica away. So that's cool if you're trying to make something similar with the same lines. Also, um, you, you can make guides, which I use a lot. Um, say you want this here, and you really want this headline to go right next to it, um, but you don't know how to make sure that it's going there. You can just go into the, um, the ruler on the side and drag over and make a box, or make a line, and then um, it'll line up like automatically line up right next to it. And the, the lines, they don't print. They go away when you're done looking at it. Um, does anyone have any? Yeah. So for the guides, um, is it like, does it automatically magnet to them? Yeah. OK, because I know like Photoshop, when you have guides, it doesn't always do that. So. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it does. And you can do them from the top, too, like either way. Um, they're really helpful if you're trying to, for example, like make a photo collage. That's when I use them the most on a page and say you want like four photos to line up next to each other, you can drag down the line and have each little photo line up next to each other. Um, I also use that little space tool thing um, all the time when I'm doing photo collages. 
they want the photos to be one pica away from each other, you just hold down shift, hit the button, and it'll move exactly that right amount. Um, does anyone have any other questions, or is there anything that you guys want to see in InDesign? They can show you how to do. Nicole, what did you say about moving a box over one pica and tying something about shift and then your, your arrow keys? Yep, you hold down shift and you move the arrow left or right or up or down, and then it'll move it exactly one pica. Oh. So I discovered that on accident, and it's been the best thing in my whole life. Because <laughs> I use it all the time. Because yeah. <laughs> I would just sit there and make like the guides all the time. And yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I think a cool thing in InDesign is like master pages if you want like human harmony. Yeah, um, yes, that's what these are up here. Um, so for example, um, if you want like the same, these ones that we did, they all had like the same thing on the top for, um, what do you Sorry, that's the same word for template. Is it? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you can edit the master pages so that whenever you open up the template, it'll always be there. So something that you use a lot will always be there. I know at Heritage we use um, for our front pages. They have master pages, and so you go in and you just drag down the front page, and it's a template, and you just go in and fill in everything. Um, so I'm going to show you um, an example. You can also like look at all of these. So you would just drag it down, and then you just go in, and you just fill in everything. Is that what you meant, Crystal? No. I don't know. <laughs> when I used InDesign, you could set up like a master page with like where your page numbers would go and everything. Maybe that's the same. I don't know. These have page it's numbers on them. <laughs> the reason we did this is because we found out that a lot of like our um, section editors were spending a lot of unnecessary time designing pages and we made all these templates that they can literally just imagine the page when they're assigning the story and um, do it all together. Michelle, you're making my phone blow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeding it into the live chat. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to move into Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is really fun, but it's really kind of hard, but it's really cool. Like the things that you can do with it are really awesome. Um, so this is a pig that I made. Um, it took me a couple hours. I used a template that I found, like an instructional guide I found online that told me how to make it step by step. Um, I made him for a budget story that we had to do. Um, so basically, Illustrator is a very, very fancy version of Microsoft Paint. Um, you can do a lot of the same things in it, but it makes it like, a lot smoother. Um, and you're making vector images which is really cool because the vector image, you can make them as big or as little as you want and it won't affect the quality. So for example, you can put Jim, which is the name of the pig that we made him, um, you can put him on like a billboard and the quality will still be the same. It'll be really good. Whereas if you were to make something in Photoshop and then you go and try and make it bigger, it'll get blurry because it's a vector, it, the quality lasts. Um, and so these are some examples of stuff I made. I've been using Illustrator for less than a year. Um, that pig was the second thing I ever made on Illustrator. So that's just saying that like it's not, it's hard, but it's not that hard to pick up. Um, so this is something, the growth spurt thing is something I did by, um, all I did was wrote down spurt in text, and then I sat there and meticulously placed numbers over the text for about four hours until my eyes broke. Um, and then you just delete the text and the number of the words were there. Um, I've got two covers that I did for the paper. Um, I made an apple tree because we did a story about apples. Um, and then I made a photo look cooler because we had a, a great panther on campus and I just did that. And then um, this one I did, uh, it's a map of Oakland University. Uh, I decided, we decided at, at my newspaper that we really wanted to do like a welcome back issue, but we didn't want to do something we had already done. So we decided, let's make a map. And I thought that it would be a really fun idea to, to learn how to do it. So what I did was I went into Google Earth, 
and took a screenshot of Oakland University from Google Earth and sat there and zoomed in and traced every building and every sidewalk. It took me 12 hours. It's very, it was very time consuming. But the final result was really cool because people could walk around campus and they had this map that had the bus stops on campus, the bikes, places to have bike share program, the coffee shops, and all that other stuff. And we also highlighted some things that we thought people should um, look at. And then um, I'm going to show you guys how to do some things. And one of the things is making an infographic. It's really easy to do, especially with Illustrator. Illustrator allows you to do things like this that I've done um, and making them look pretty. Um, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Did you have a drawing tab there or anything with this? Nope, I did that all with my trackpad. I don't know why. It was really time consuming, and after I was done, I was like, why didn't I use a mouse? <laughs> Nobody did not use anything, I just used my trackpad. Um, okay. So I'm going to show you how to make an infographic. Oh, I have Jim. This is the pig. I just want to show you like, how you do it. You kind of like, he's all different, different pieces. For example, his tail, I made using the paintbrush. Um, so one of the cool things, like I was saying, it's kind of like Microsoft Paint, but it's a lot more different. Um, you can draw, and then um, it makes it smooth, and you can also go in and resize what you're drawing. Um, so for example, the, the tail, I just went just like this. And then obviously a little bit more pristine with it, but you can go in and make it as big as you want or as little as you want. And like I said, what's cool about it being a vector is that no matter how big it is or how little it is, the quality still stays really well. So this was just a combination of different pieces that I put together. Circles. Um, I made this with a pencil, but okay, I'm going to show you how to make an infographic. Okay. Um, so it's really easy. Photo, or Illustrator has made it really easy. There's uh, the graph tool. And you can change it based off of what type of graph you're trying to make. Um, I'll do a pie graph because I like those ones the most. So you just pull down and you click pie graph tool. And then I do it, I pull down shift so it's an equal circle. Um, and you get the circle. And then you just type in the numbers. So let's do 12. I'm going to try something because I'm not exactly it's this way. Okay. When you do a bar graph, it's the reverse. But say you wanted to make three circles at the same time, you can um, just by going down. So 10, 12, 55. And then it'll give you two circles at the same time. Um, but I'm just going to do the one. Um, you add in your figures. And then when you're done, you click the check mark, which I already clicked. Um, Okay, now here's where it gets fun and where you can customize things. Oops. So you, just like you did in, photo, in InDesign, you have two different arrows. You've got the selection tool, which selects the whole thing. And then you've got the um, direct selection tool, which will select the different aspects. So you can go in and change the color, for example, of one of the pie charts. Um, of one of the different things. So I want to do green and blue. And then I also really don't like that it has a black stroke around it. Um, so I'm going to change that by using this selection tool and clicking. And then if you click back here, this is your stroke. You can make it nothing or you can make it white. I like to make mine white. And then I like to change the stroke side to about a two. And that way it looks pretty seamless. Um, if you wanted to, you can pull out a part of it. Um, I've seen people do that before. Um, and then it's all a matter of making it look nice. There's many different things that you can do to make it look nice. Um, I mean, I think it looks pretty as it is. But you can, um, for example, put a hole in the middle of it. I like doing it this way. Um, so, okay. And here's another cool thing about Illustrator. Instead of sitting there and going like, where is the middle of this thing? And you can also do this in, um, in InDesign and in Photoshop. There's this align tool that is really awesome. And um, it's right here. Um, 
If you don't have it, you might need to get it from window and then a line um, that'll bring it up in your toolbar. But you can, it'll center it, but it won't work in this instance. Um, so I'm just kidding, it won't work for me for some reason. But you can theoretically align things by clicking this button and by clicking this button. It'll do it by like left and right and then in the middle. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it's not working for me right now. But, so I'm just going to guess. I have it set up on my computer too where um, it'll snap in the center, which maybe it was already there. Let's try again. Sorry guys. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> um, so then it kind of looks like this. Um, I like doing them like this so that you can kind of add text into the middle. Um, and then now I'm just going to kind of go over some of the, the different tools that you have. Um, you can use you can use the paintbrush and you can literally make whatever you want. Um, by drawing. A lot of the things I make, I just sit there and draw. And yeah, it takes a long time and it's kind of really hard. But as you were saying, if you can get a you can get a pad and you can get a pen and plug it into your computer, and um, it's still kind of messy. Now. Yeah, they're kind of hard to use. That's why I didn't like it. But you can draw on that, and it'll take your drawing and put it onto the computer, which is really cool. Also, I have an iPad, um, and I have I use Notability, and you can draw on that, and then you can send that to yourself and then incorporate that. So, for example, um, I have my signature saved. I drew it on my iPad emailed it to myself and then I incorporated it into Illustrator and you can go in and change the color and all that stuff with it. Is there anything you guys really want to know or like me to clarify about Illustrator? <laughs> can you just go over again real quick how you made that circle and so yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. So, um, okay, so there's a little thing right here on the right or on the left and you can change them like I said, you can do different ones. Mm -hmm. But I did pie graph yeah. and then hold down shift so you get the circle, and then you um, enter in your numbers. So let's do, and you can do as many as you want, like however many is in there. And then it'll automatically um, go in after you hit the apply mark. It'll add it all up for you and make sure everything's equal. And then um, you can move it around like this. And if you wanted to change the colors, you can direct select it and go in and change the colors, um, whatever you want. One of the things, too, I wanted to tell you guys about is Adobe has a really cool color program called Adobe Cooler. Have any of you ever heard about it? Um, one of the design rules is that you never want to use more than five colors in one thing. It's just because it doesn't look that pretty. So Cooler <coughs> is it's user-submitted colors that people have done. I'll show you. Um, and it's right in... It's right in Illustrator, right in InDesign, right in Photoshop. Um, so you can, for example, I was looking up Christmas. You can search in a term and people will tag colors for it. You can do school, for example. And then um, people have all these different colors that they picked and there's only the five colors that you want to kind of stick with. Um, so then you add it to your swatches panel. And so say I'm doing like a back to school pie chart and I want to keep it all the same, you'd use these colors or any other colors that you'd like um, for it. Um, and there's a really cool app that you can get for your phone for Cooler, um, where say you really like, I don't know, um, a plant and you think, oh, that'd be really nice to have those colors in my house, paint my wall. You can take a picture with your phone with Cooler and it'll pull out my colors from whatever's in the picture. Um, and it's really cool. I love Cooler. I use it all the time. Um, for colors, because it all they're all colors that look good together. This one looks like, it reminds me of like a vintage shirt or something. Um, but, so then, I've got the colors that, these colors aren't that great, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, and now I want to get rid of the stroke around it. So the stroke is right here. Um, I do white. Um, you can do no if you want to do none. Um, oops, I just did the one in there. Um, you can do no, but I don't. It just gets rid of it completely, so that 
it's all like that in the middle, which is great if you if that's the look you're going for. But I just really like um, using white to kind of give them some separation. Sometimes it does that. It's just based off of the stroke on it. I don't, it's because there's too many pieces. I don't understand why it does it that way. It does it only every so often. Um, and then you can go in and move around the images however you want um, by using the selection tool. Does anyone have any questions? Go ahead. Yeah, but how did you add that circle in the middle? You made like a donut? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So I just made a circle. Oh, you just put that on top? Yep. Oh. And then... Um, I made the color white because, like I said, I like to, oops, I like yeah. to do white. Um, hold down shift to make sure it's round. Make the color white. And just drag it and put it right in the middle. Um, that's just one of the many things that you can do with your infographics. Like in the um, thing here, I don't know if I can zoom in. I don't know if you can see like the different types of circles that I did. Just because I think that having a different variety of them looks really well. Um, it looks really good. Does anyone have any other questions? Go ahead. Can you bring them over like uh, later? Is yeah. Illustrator? Yep. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll do a couple of different circles. Um, also, too, you can do like other things in circles. You can, just by holding down the button, you can do rectangles or stars and whatever. Um, um, okay. Change the color of this one. Okay, so you can, um, is this what you mean, like this type of layering, or do you mean like using the layer aspect? I guess like layer aspect and then like spacing Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, say you want to. Um, I'm gonna open up something different. Um, something that I made for Heritage. We did a back to school thing. Okay. I use layering in this. Um, so layering is important, for example, in something like this. Say you want to change this, but you go and do it, and you've got all your layer, or you've got it all in one layer, and you go to change this, but then you like grab the background or something. Um, you can lock the layers so that nothing happens there. Um, so now those layers are locked, and when I go to move things, it's just moving what's on top. In, or in order to create the different layers, um, I recommend having a separate layer for your background just in general so that you, when you do move things around it doesn't get confusing. So you make a background. And then um, click over here. This is your layers button. Um, they made them conveniently in layers. Then you um, can click right here and create a new layer. And then I click in this spot right here and this will um, block it. So that you can't move it around, whereas now you can move it around. Um, and then you can go in and like add your text. Um, one of the cool things with InDesign 2 or Illustrator 2 is, um, and this is my favorite thing about it, is in InDesign you have to make like draw a box and type in it. In Illustrator you can do that, but you can also just click and you can say like whatever you want, and then you can hold down shift or and you can just drag and make it as big or as little as you want. Um, so I always hold down shift to make it proportionate, but you can also make it bigger, and it's, you can't do that in, in InDesign. There's no easy way to do it, whereas in Illustrator you can because that's what it's made for. After you stretch it, you can still change your text. Yep, you can just go in and change it, and if you wanted to take that a step further, you can, um, when it's like this, you can um, create outlines for it. 
So each oh. thing has a different outline. And then they're grouped together right now, but if you really wanted to, you can ungroup everything and go in and use this tool, this um, arrow, and move it all around. Oops. And then you can go in and make, say you want the O to be bigger. And continue to type? Yep. Uh, no. Okay. Once you the make it, rises. yeah, once you make it um, an outline, Sorry. yeah. Oh. So like you would want to use like creating outlines. Say for example, you have this really cool font, um, but you can't PDF it because sometimes you can't. Or say you have a really cool font, like I do this at work all the time, where I'll use a font and I'm not sure if it's like a standard font or if it's a font that I've just downloaded. And we have someone else who opens the page and then PDFs the page. And I don't say I don't know if they have that font, but I really want to use it. You create an outline so that the font becomes an image instead of a font. Um, and that's what I did here. And so now it's no longer a font, but it's an image. And you can go in and change the different little pieces in it. Um, so say you want to um, keep this here, and then you wanted to add more layers, you can. Um, you can. The layers are good because you can just add different things to it. I'm trying to think of an example of when I really used layers. And then, as you said, with merging, at the end, when you're all done, if you wanted it to all be one compressed file, you can merge them all together. That way you don't have the eight different layers. Um, but having the different layers is good, so if you want to work on all these different aspects together. Like I've seen um, people do images where they've got like a texture on this picture, but there's no texture on that picture. And they want to like make it all together. You can do it with layers. Does that answer your question? No, it does, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, but the important part with the, like the main layer is to lock it, because otherwise you're not gonna. And you can just do that by clicking on it. You can also with this eye um, make things invisible. Say you don't want that to be there anymore. Instead of deleting it, you can just delete the eye, like make the eye invisible. So it's gone. But so say you spend all this time making something, and you think, well, maybe I really don't want that there. Instead of ruining everything, you can just use a little eye. Or you can say maybe this would look better if it was. Can you, can you show like cascading the head level with like another head level how that works? Yeah. I'm just going to copy and paste the same one. Do you mean like creating a, sh a shadow? Yeah, like a shadow. Or something. Um, okay. So you can do that. I am actually not sure how to make a shadow in Illustrator without doing it this way. Um, whereas if you were doing it in Photoshop, you could create a shadow. Um, hang on, let me, because you can make it your own way right here, and you kind of just want to make it, just move it a little bit, um, so that it's a little bit, um, yeah, how did you align I just dr dragged it, um, I have mine set up so that if you can see these, like, green lines, it kind of, like, smart predicts where things are going. Um, I feel like that's really helpful at different times. So right now I'm going to just align it specifically um, so it's right on top. And then you can move it down and over if you wanted to. I did that by holding down the shift button and moving it exactly a, a pica. Um, but you can really like change it as much as you want um, and add as much as you want to it. But yeah, you can do it really easily. Want me to show you how to do it in InDesign? Or in um, Photoshop or InDesign? What's that? Do you want me to show you how to do it? Are you talking about for like your shirts? Yeah, I was curious to kind of see how that works. Okay, I'll show you how to do it in InDesign because it's a lot easier to do it in InDesign. Um, and that's where I would do it if I was wanting to make one. Um, sorry, I closed my eyes. <laughs> Have I lost anyone yet? Am I boring you to death? Okay. <laughs> if you start, say you start working on something, so one well, hour, can you? Move that over to InDesign yep. and move stuff in between. Yep. You can use everything interchangeably. I really love these products. Like, I've tried GIMP before, which is free. I really don't like GIMP um, at all. What um, about Paint or NAI? I, I don't know. I really, I just really like this. I don't know. I don't know if it's just because I've been using it for so long. But, um, okay. So. Okay, so.
tahun. <coughs> so you've got this text and you want to give it a shadow. So you go to Object, Effects, Drop Shadow, and then you can click Preview so you can see what you're doing. And it gives you the shadow right there. And then you can, um, what's cool with it is that you can kind of change how much distance there is. So if you want it to be, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of awkward. You can change how far away the shadow goes. You can make it closer. Oops. Um, so once again, it's object, effects, and drop shadow. Um, you can change the color of it. Um, you can change the different blendings that it does. Like sometimes they do different things. Um, you can change where it's at, the angle of it. Um, where that's it's, that's like you recommend uh, in design. Yeah, because there's all these different options that you can do. You can change the size of the shadow. Like if, it's, if you want it to be harder or softer, I don't know if you can tell the difference that it's making there, but. It all depends on what you want to like work with, um, and like the distance. We can't do that stuff in the version that we use, right? No. <laughs> we use Photoshop Seven or Photoshop CS. Yeah. And this is CS Six. This is really old. Actually, Austin, I think you can. I'll have to show you, because I think you can customize it this much. You can do drop shadow on that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you. I don't know if it has all the same like options. Yeah. Yeah, we have CS, and now like they're on CS. Yeah, oh. basically, oh. and now it's at CS six. Oh. <laughs> Ours is very old, and the one thing that is like very disappointing about Adobe software is you can it doesn't work backwards, so you can't use something from this and put it. Um, or open it up on an older page. Um, I think I said that backwards. You can't take this and open it up on an older system. So if I wanted to take this page that I'm designing and open it up on our work computer and work on it, I can't do it. But say I wanted to take a page that I was working on on our work computer and put it on this using this software, I could. Um, but you can't do it the other way. The only way to go about it is by saving it as an ID4, which is different. Because um, it's saving it as a template. Um, but yeah, is there anything else that you would like me to show them? On your pick, how did you create the uh, like the reflection on the top? Where? There's like a oh on the thing. On the top oh, that was a gradient. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is the first and only time that I've used gradients because it's hard and I don't really like them as much. Um, but so um, to make a gradient. It's this button right here, um, and you can change it by clicking this. You can change it, for example, as pink as you want it. You can move around with where it's going to be. Um, I'll show you by making me back to this page, um, and then you want to add. Say you want to do the gradient, and say you want to add colors into it. I like to make my swatches separate for this purpose. Um, you can go in and drag colors right into it. Um, and you can drag colors right out of it too. Um, and you can just play around with how it looks. Um, you can make it linear or radial. You can change the opacity of it. You can like do a lot with it. Um, this is making it see-through, so if you want to put it over something, you can. Um, the opacity. Yeah. Um, you can just keep adding, like, and you can add as many colors or as little colors as you want, um, and you can change everything in it. Um, we used gradients, or I used gradients at the Oakland Press. They did a lot with, um, in their flag, they did a lot with, like, a, a picture of a person, and they had the flag thing there, the gradient there. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, does, does anyone have any other questions or anything else they'd like me to show you? Can you angle the gradient? Yeah. Um, you just click this button here and it can do it whichever way you want. It's really fun to play around. I encourage you guys, if you take away anything from this, is to get the like 30 day trial package and just open it and play with it. Because that's how I learned. 
Um, and I'll show you the last slide that I have um, is this. Um, where to find inspiration? I look on Pinterest. I don't know if you guys use Pinterest. I'm sure you, a lot of you don't, but it's really cool. Um, you can just type in design, and there's a lot of different things, different ideas that you can get from it. Um, you can get resume ideas. I'll show you. <laughs> um, because it's really cool. And you can just search. And people have like tutorials. Um, there's a lot of, I have a whole board for design. Um, so newspaper design, and there are just all these different things that people have tagged newspaper design that you can look at. I like looking at these for inspiration for when I'm designing pages. Um, you can just do design in general um, and just see all these different things that people have done. Um, and I learned, everything I learned, most of it is from using YouTube video tutorials, looking up like regular tutorials that people have typed out. Um, I did take, take in three classes. Um, I took an intro to new media class, which basically taught me what I just taught you. Um, and then I did two, new, uh, two media design classes, and that kind of just taught me what I had already learned from working at the press and working at um, the student newspapers that I worked with, how to design pages and stuff like that. But most of what I learned was from a hands-on approach and looking at the tutorials online. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I have business cards too, if anyone wants them. Yeah, I do. You got the business cards? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.